Hi, my name is Rose Martin, and I had a dream on September 14th, 2021. September 14th, 2021. I and my husband were visiting some friends, and we were uh, staying in a kind of like row house it, where the, you know, we could walk between back and forth and visit with others and then go to your room. Well, I had, go, we had gone to sleep and then uh, I woke up and my husband was missing. So I kind of, you know, just, just got started waking myself up, getting up. Um, and I heard the wind outside began to pick up and it picked up so fast and so quick that it had these uh, hurricane sounds that were going on. So when I looked out the window, um, I saw my grandbaby and I went out to grab her. And when I went out to grab her and I started backing up toward the building because on the alongside the building were two chairs that were sitting out there. And when I backed up to the chair and I, with her, I sat down in the chair and I was looking with amazement because these were, winds were, were just tearing up everything. And there was a, a person, uh, a guy came and he sat in the chair beside me and he said, told, told me that some of us would uh, see this and others wouldn't be able to see it. And when he said that, I started noticing the, the people that were out and about. And they were just going on with their everyday lives and uh, seemed like nothing was affecting them. But I noticed the wind wasn't affecting me, the guy that was sitting in, in the chair next to mine, or my grandbaby. And uh, since it wasn't affecting me, I was I was really surprised that you know well, well what was going on. So when I looked up, it was like thunder and and rumbling sounds. And when I looked up, it was a female deer. Now this this deer was really really massive. She was big. She was huge, and she was running. And when she she ran through, I thought thought that she was the one that was making the the sounds but I realized it was another sound that that was following her the sound the sound that she was making and when I looked kept watching from the rig, the direction she came from and it was a massive massive male deer they, that was had giant antlers, and she, the female deer, was about half the size of what he was. So he was very, very large. And when he finally came through, he it the 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 winds were twisting and tearing up things and rumbling and and just uh, tearing up everything that that was in sight. So after he passed by. And everything, the dust and everything settled. Uh, the guy and I and my grandbaby, we were looking and the people that were there had disappeared. And they seemed like they were just no more. And at this point, I heard the voice of my husband call me and I woke up. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, name of the Holy Spirit, the Earthly Mother, the Sanctifying Yahweh Shai, the Holy Son. Brothers and sisters, Jews and Gentiles alike, welcome. This is your humble servant, a Big Levi. Whoops. <laughs> this is your humble servant, Big Levi. And today is Friday, October the 29th, 2021. And it's currently 9.08 a.m. We are going to bring forward the dreams of the nation according to the book of Joel. Okay, let's get the scriptures because we are at the end of time. And we know um, <clears throat> a lot of people out there 
uh thank you for the sister for bringing us uh, this dream again uh i'm i am going to bring all the dreams that i receive vocally okay uh, the one that are uh, recorded okay certain one of them i may have to read them uh we're going to do the audio records and the one that we can read the audio is much more better okay we can feel the person talking we can feel the uh, um, the emotion so now because of that uh, we are going to have an audio recording i believe once a month or once every two and three months and stuff like that to give the most high praises and glory and to let the nation know prophecies being fulfilled our people we are having dreams and we are seeing things the book of joel speak no lies the book of joel is being fulfilled now we know perry stone is listening and he's swagger jacking our stuff and saying that oh he's seeing an increase and in, uh and his people are having dreams old men the senior citizen that has nothing to do with senior citizens that has nothing to do with old folks having dreams you know it's a i, I don't have time to explain, explain this to him now you're going to witness brothers i have it uh, this is the first time i'm listening this uh you're going to witness our people their dreams and then their testimonies all of them are going to be here uh just listen uh, you might have uh, some confirmation uh i again i probably not going to be able to uh you know interpret it and translate everything and uh, i mean in my spirit i have to do this live okay thank you for the beloved sister okay for sending us this dream let's um let's send another one and the sister give us permission to share it with the nation and we just did let's take another one now beloved brothers and sisters we are going to experience we are going to listening again uh to our brethren and sistren that have visions experience and dreams they want to bring it in because this is prophecy all right this is the book of joel okay uh chapter 2 verse 28 and it shall come to pass afterward that i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions our people are dreaming our people are seeing vision and our sons and our daughters are, prof are prophesizing sons and daughters doesn't literally mean little children or all your kids it literally mean the son and daughters of uh, uh, the the remnant the remnant will prophesy so we have a couple of people here that's going to bring some experience beloved please bear with us i will not be able to explain everything and uh, again i like to do this live so the spirit will come in the midst of us now if you wish to share your dreams your visions and your experience with us we only ask you if you are going to record it which is the best way to do it to go in a place that is quiet no music okay if there's any music the uh the youtube algorithm their computer the software they will pick it up and then they will give us a lot of crap about it okay not only that they will just they could take down your channel and say that you copy their stuff and things like that and we know the nation are watching us some 83 is watching us we have to bring the fear upon them by bringing those prophecies unto life okay if you have to bring it if you have to um uh, share your dream with us please put uh okay give the most high praises first and then say please share with the nation so we will have so we will have your permission to share it because certain dreams certain things are private certain experiment experience of or private you you probably wish not to share it with the nation you wanted to say between you and i that is fine but in the beginning of the uh, in the beginning of your of the audio record please say give the most high praises and glory first and then say please share with the nation and then go ahead and share the dreams and then at the end of the dreams you give the most high praises and glory and then we will share it with the nation and and again beloved if you're gonna do this uh if there is children in the background that's fine the kids need to be there because they're also prophesizing 
Okay, you may not understand what they are saying. Little babies, they are cooing and then uh, uh, crying and stuff like that. Your sons and your daughters, they will prophesy. You don't know whatever interruption that you face, keep it going. Do not cut whatever you are doing. You have a conversation with somebody and then if it's, if it's, not, if it's not private, something you don't want the nation to hear, redo it again. But if it's something... Whatever you get interrupted, please continue. That's how it is. That's how the Mosai sent his message. Uncut, unedit, raw. All right. So now, um, again, beloved, if you're sending us uh, this, uh, your, your audio, make sure if, you, if you're sending it, name it first. Name it, uh, for instance, the file that you're sending, they got like audio, like A, for instance, that one over there, it's OD2021062 PTT0. Okay, so those are, they are really hard to find once I download it and I have to rename them. And then it took me a long time to do that. So if you record a, a, a audio, once you recorded it, um, you rename it, for instance, if your name is Joel, and you rename it Joel Dream Chariot, about Chariot, and then you listen to it, you make sure it's clear, and then you send it to us, because we receive multiple uh, dreams and visions, it, it's too grainy, we can't hear it, it's too low, but we will play them, okay, for the nation to hear, all right, beloved brothers and sisters, Jews and Gentiles alike, let us do this, let us bring prophecy unto the people all right uh, i think i will leave this at that uh, at, at the end but let's play this i woke up at 3 40 i'm at 3 39 and i started recording at 3 43 and i had a dream and my dream was that I was with, I was at this event, and you could tell it's for the chosen people. And in this dream, we was putting on, we was putting on, um, like the feather tails that we supposed to hang, and it was the, it was colors, the colors. It was the 12 tribe colors, if that makes any sense. But we had to put it on us. The, we had to wear them to let them know who we, who we, who we were in this, um, this, in, in this big, in this event, it was big. And the guy that I used to go Bible study with and the Sabbath with, uh, I used to listen to because I went there to learn, but I never joined. But he says his fellowship, but I never joined it. But I went there to to learn. He was there, and he was upset because I was there, and the people that was in his fellowship was also there. So I was putting my feathers on. For the color, the fellas standing for the 12 tribes. I was putting it on and he was throwing temper tantrum because I was there. So they, so the other people was about to leave. The people that was in his fellowship was leaving. And the judge, the head judge seen that she wouldn't have nobody to, um, to announce, she wouldn't have, she she gave it to him because everybody else was leaving. So to keep, to at least keep one person, she gave it to him. And I said, you're going to really give this to him? And he really didn't win, and I won? Well, on, it's okay on this earth. Because the, we have to stand in front of the two, the true judge. And I woke up. All oh, praises to the most high. Good dreams. Uh, again, uh, we know for a fact that the, uh, the, the Psalm 91. Why would this do that? I don't know. But I thought I put this thing on silent. Huh. 
Love it on the side. Good. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, we know for a fact in Psalm 91 verse. Uh, Psalm 91. Oh, boy. Should I move this thing out of the way? Here we go. Psalm 91 verse 4. We are covered under the further of the most high. <coughs> Let's just take it like this. Psalm 91 verse 4. Okay. Uh, he shall cover. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou thrust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. So the experience that the sister have uh, with the uh, with the feathers going over there, and then that guy, wherever that person was, and she was a uh, story under him, uh, story with him, and you know he he kind of like feel angry when the people that used to be with him left so this is a representation of the people out there whether they are pastors or camps uh, you're not following them now you're not following me and then i'm angry you're supposed to following me you're supposed to come under my feather i will protect you nope that's that's not what that is okay that's not what that is so um uh, we have to understand that we're supposed to come under the Mosai uh, uh, feather. Okay, we're supposed to come under uh, the Mosai uh, protection. He is our shield and buckler. We we do not need to follow men. Okay, uh, men cannot get us into the kingdom. Again, like I say personally, the, my, I don't. I'm not worried about making it to the kingdom. I am only worried to do the most I's will and I let him decide if I'm qualified, if my fruit is meet for repentance. And I I see something that they've been doing in the Christian church. They made our people thinking like they can somewhat some way force themselves into the kingdom. Or they can even worse, bring other people with them in the kingdom. And then they can actually uh, bring the bring the the truth, the gospel, and then shove it down people's throat. And then they will come to the truth. They will be enlightened. That's not how it works. Okay. If the Most I want somebody in, he will call that person. If the Most I called you, give him praises and glory. And then uh, let the people know. If they don't want to be in the truth, they don't want to come. Leave it be. Leave it so. And then give everything in the end of the Most I. And hopefully you pray, um, you you fast, and you do what you need to do for the Most I to considering you and give you a seat on his side. So we do not have the power to protect men under our own wings, okay? We all little chick, we all uh, know little birds, we have to go under the big bird to protect us from the, the ravenous bird. Is that what that is? Uh, or the predator bird, like the hawk or the, uh, the eagle. Define ravenous. Here's the definition of ravenous extremely hungry all right voracious uh, extremely hungry birds okay this is psalm 91 verse 4 then again uh the book of joel all right and it shall come to pass joel 2 verse 28 uh, it shall come to pass uh, afterward that i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions all right let us keep on moving I forgot to mention that it was a.m. when I woke up. So 3.39 a.m. and 3.49 a.m. That's why I forgot to mention. Hi, Big Levi. It's Josie A. from London. Uh, just wanted to tell you about a couple of experiences. Um, hopefully, I'll be very coherent and um, you won't have to cut too much um so i'm kind of testing this to see if i sound all right um before i submit it to you okay so the first experience i'm gonna tell you about was when i had to go to a local area phone repair shop 
um, I had, I've had a couple of phones that I needed repaired and I also had a tablet that just wasn't updating. Um, and I needed, I, I received the phones back, um, but I needed a tablet because I wanted to start a business and I needed a tablet to kind of, to start that, you know. I didn't really want to delay too long. Um, it was already getting quite late in the in the afternoon or evening, I should say. Um, you know, I was pushing on for six o'clock and I was mindful that this particular shop closed at about seven. Uh, so I was, was sort of racing there to sort of make sure I could submit my tablet to be updated or repaired. And then, you know, that was one job done for the day and you know I wouldn't delay starting my business any any longer anyway I head I, I get down there and as soon as I get in the queue um you know to get my tablet repaired and sort of checked in you know and I'm, I'm waiting behind a lady um she's doing her business and I'm waiting behind the lady to, to speak to the shop attendant I notice that everybody around me apart from this lady in front of me just looks really crazy they kind of look like zombies and and actually they all kind of looks like and I don't want to sound rude or bad or you know wicked but you know when you know somebody's on drugs and they all it, it, it they all looks like they were waiting for their next fix but literally everybody around me uh seemed like and who was outside this um phone shop or this phone kiosk looked rough you know mashed up rough kind of like no teeth rough raggedy clothes rough kind of smelly rough but i sort of felt like i'd walked into this kind of zone really anyway uh i was thinking actually i don't think i should be here because i just realized you know there was about seven maybe a bit, a bit more they were all kind of they had all surrounded me uh, and they were obviously waiting for this phone kiosk man too and I don't know if they wanted to rob him I just don't I have no idea but they were all present anyway I didn't really want to get my tablet out I didn't even really want to get um, my deposit out to pay you know because I just thought, no, these guys look rough and heavy. But anyway, I, I just, you know what? I, for some reason, I persisted and I stayed in the queue. Anyway, I, I'm next in line. <clears throat> uh, one of the guys who's who's looks rough he he just locks eyes with me and he's just looking at me and he's he's almost looking at me like he you know he's really pissed off you know and he's kind of looking at me so that I end up looking away you know to avoid confrontation anyway it's my turn to speak to the uh shop attendant and uh and I, I just open my mouth and I say to the shopkeeper or, you know, the kiosk man, the phone kiosk man, I say, look, you know, I want to check this phone in, <clears throat> this tablet in. I want to get it fixed. You know, for some reason it's not working, this, that and the other. And uh, he's like, yeah, OK, I'll fix it for you. <clears throat> anyway, by the time... Well, as that transaction was completed, I noticed that every single one of these zombie type looking junkies 
just seem to slip away. You know, one crossed over the road, well, two crossed over the road, um, two kind of, um, the guy that was looking at me who just looked so angry, he kind of disappeared. Um, they just all sort of moved, they just all went, they just all dispersed. And I knew that the Heavenly Father was protecting me. I knew that f from the moment, I just knew that, and I told, I said, I told my friend, you know, who lives in Germany, I was like, he was like, what, what do you think that was about? And I said, I have no idea what that was about. But I just knew that the Heavenly Father was protecting me and he, whatever demons were possessing these particular junkies or zombies, um, the Heavenly Father just went, you know what, <laughs> you ain't going to touch this one, you know, you're not going to touch my child. So that was, uh, that was absolutely amazing. It was just amazing to see it in real time, you know? And uh, yeah, so I just wanted to bring that to your attention. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna sign off because I've got a couple of other stories and I kind of need to compile them. I need to sort of like gather my thoughts and then compile them and then send them. But that's part one, that's the first one. <laughs> Anyway, Big Levi, love the work that you do. Really appreciate your work, brother. Um, I really thank you. I thank you for your spiritual insights, you know. Um, and I thank you for <laughs> I thank you for saying the things that you do. My gosh, sometimes the way you say things just cracking me up. <laughs> Where's that whistle? Anyway, blessings to you and may the king reign forever all praises to the most high and there goes the whistle <laughs> now beloved brothers and sisters we just uh listened to the beloved sister josie over there in uh the uk is that thing even recording right there let me see uh yes it is now she has this experience okay when she walk up to this place again she's a daughter of the most high okay um and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, okay? And then uh, Acts 21 verse 9, And the same men had four daughters, virgins, young women, which did prophesy. Okay, our women are prophetess. We are prophets, they are the prophetess, okay? You know, if you read the story in the, uh, in the, the whole chapter the 21, okay? Uh, um, and, the, and the same men... Uh, had four daughters and virgins which did prophesy. okay our sisters our, our daughters our our women our prophetess they are prophesizing okay if i say this word uh, uh right okay we have priest we have priestess all right the woman the priest of mahan they caught our priestess deborah was a priestess she was uh uh, she was a judge. She was a, a warrior and a priestess also in the book of uh, the throne of David. We find out that when um, the, I believe the daughter of the fellow that made the strike that deal with the Musa and then he ended up sacrificing his own daughter. She has to go to the priestess to uh, find solace. So what you see here, beloved, is the sister have this experience there's two more we're gonna go through uh, she has this experience where she has to go to the store and get some stuff repaired but the moment she got there beloved she find out wait a minute something is off you see that's the spiritual realm that you see there the spirit come over onto her and she can literally see the people the way they are Be because that's the true way they are brothers the way those people are it's not like when you go certain places the people that's not they that's not how they truly look the true looks they hide it under the, the the spiritual realm that's when you use your spiritual eyes you're like wait a minute those people are zombies you can literally see them that's why when you go out you're like you people are oblivious of what's going on out there you guys are a bunch of zombies man that's how they look now two things happen here when the spirit opened her eyes and then uh 
another angel was with her, Gabriel, that hold those people down. Why? Beloved, you watch all our videos. You see for no reason. People getting stabbed. People getting hurt. People standing waiting for the train to go to work or going home. Somebody sitting someday come out of nowhere and then push that person into the train track or push that person into the train because they don't have the spiritual eyes to see this person is a demon. Yet the heavenly father showed the, her daughter who those people are and then he hold them back. Uh, the man was staring at her as if he was going to hurt her. He couldn't. He couldn't. So this is the power of the Mosai. This is the power of our people. Okay. This is the the um this is the uh, experiment that our people have been experienced out there. Okay. All right. Let's see if we can get the 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 other uh, the other one. All right, I was in the white one. My gosh, sometimes the way you say things just cracking me up. <laughs> Where's that whistle? Anyway, blessings to you. And may the king reign forever. Be at peace. There have been no Jacob's trouble. Yeah, Heavenly Father bless you. Always. Okay, thank you. Bye. Okay, part two. <clears throat> okay, um, I'm going to take... That's the second experience that she had. Take myself back to... I think it was about 2001. Yeah, it was probably about around about 2001. Maybe 2002. Uh, certainly before I was in the truth. Um... And just before, really, I suppose, you know, I was kind of like making the wrong choices in life and I wasn't really kind of going anywhere. Um, I certainly wasn't a bad person, but, you know, the life choices that I was making were leading into one sort of kind of direction. <clears throat> uh, it, it wasn't... It wasn't a straight, narrow, and guided path. Um, anyway, I was up in the north of England, and um, I had bought a really cheap house. You know, back in the day, you could do that, you know. Uh, and um, me and my mum had decided to buy a really cheap house, and it was going to be a fixer-upper and uh, it was something that I was going to do up. So anyway, I I'm saying all of this to say, you know, I happened to buy this house right next door to uh, a, a kind of, uh, I was going to say mad, but she wasn't a mad lady. She was just a, she was quite a hyper, her and her husband, uh, quite a hyper couple. Um, you know, they had this little terrace house, um, in the northeast of England, but they'd also had a farm um, in the northeast of England, which was a family home as well, the family business. Anyway, um, this, uh, this, I sort of got quite pally with this uh, neighbour, and uh, I'm just going to say she was a Gentile, but actually, you know, at the time, I didn't really know who I was. Um, you know, so, you know, I certainly was in a gen gentile state of mind myself. Um, but anyway, I, and I, I'm not exactly sure what these, this woman's intentions were of, you know, for me, you know, I, she was, she was older than me. Um, you know, she'd sort of like, she run a business I mean, she, she seemed to take a shine to me uh, and I say shine she seemed to sort of take me a little bit under her wing because I'd moved up there I was on my own um you know and um I'm gonna say we were sort of drink you know occasionally we would sort of like have a drink or 
or have a cheeky bit of, you know, weed or what have you. Um, and I, I never had enough money to kind of like buy these things. So she would sort of like, you know, she would offer um, it to me anyway. Uh, like I said, I don't really know this lady's true intentions, really. Well, you know, so when I think back, you know, some 20 odd years later or sort of, you know, I think actually some of what she said and her actions, actually, I don't think she, she kind of wanted the best for me. She just kind of took me under her wing, maybe you know, like a chicken to the slaughter, you know what I mean? <sighs> anyway, um, <clears throat> she had decided to go to her second home, which was the farm. And, uh, you know, her, her mother lived there and they also had their business there, you know. So we went, uh, so she decided to drive me, it was just me and her, and she sort of decided to take me to the farm, but she didn't invite me into the home. She just had me waiting outside in the car. And so obviously it's on a farm and it was, it was quite late. It was late, you know, I mean, I had really, when I think about it, I had no business kind of being out that late with somebody I kind of knew, but you know, <clears throat> in the middle of a farm, you know, actually I wouldn't do that again. I wouldn't do that now, but anyway, I have no idea what she was talking about when she went into her home, her farmhouse. Um, but I was sitting there waiting in the car and honestly, um, I just looked up. Well, I, I saw this kind of, um, Huh. this object sort of hovering above me. It was round. <clears throat> it was kind of like a platinum, uh, dark sort of silver, sort of black and silver, or sort of platinum, platinum uh, black and silver. And it was circular. And, um, it was probably, it was probably hovered over me about 30 to 50 feet. It was huge. It was ginormous. And I just couldn't take my eyes off it because I was just like, no one is ever going to believe me. But actually, I think I'm just seeing a UFO and I think I'm seeing it in real time. And, and it was one of the nights where, you know, I'd had um, a, what we call wacky backy and probably, and probably a little bit more as well. And uh, I was, you know, I was just looking up at this UFO type object and it just hovered over me for about five or so minutes. And it was almost, and I, I was scared, but I then wasn't scared, you know. <clears throat> and I knew this was really significant. I knew it was significant that I should see this. You know, I wasn't in the truth um, at all. I didn't even, <clears throat> I, I had a sense that I had been protected and the Heavenly Father had sort of like watched over me, but I wasn't somebody that, you know, sort of regularly communicated with my creator. Um, you know, I was just kind of aimlessly sort of going through life. I didn't have any real spiritual kind of gut at all, you know, to kind of, you know, keep me close to the most high. I, I didn't have anything like that. But I knew this particular night and event was very significant. And, uh, and anyway, <clears throat> to cut a long story short, <clears throat> we, 
when I think about it, I feel like that was a chariot and the chariot was keeping an eye on me because whatever this neighbour was planning or talking about in the when she'd gone into her farmhouse home uh, and this UFO appeared, this chariot appeared. Um, I feel the chariot appeared to protect me from this particular lady's intentions because um, it disappeared um, by the time she came back out. You know, it was hovering for about five minutes, 10 minutes maximum. She was in her home for about 15, 20 minutes. She came back out, um, we got in the car and then we drove away. Uh, I never mentioned this chariot to her because um, <laughs> I didn't want her to think I was mad. Um, but anyway, that is that is the second event. That's part two. <laughs> I, I have to think of the third one. Um, but yeah, okay. Anyway, I'm checking out for now. Thank you. Now, beloved brothers and sisters, uh, you must understand, even when we weren't in this truth, even uh, when we were not aware of this truth, we were always protected. Why? Even because we are the seed of the Heavenly Father, okay? And uh, Isaiah 44, verse 3, For I would pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring it's because we have the blessing upon us which we are the offspring of jacob now the sister got involved before she was in the truth like all of us we there are certain people that we are involved with and their intention is not too clear to us their intention is quote-unquote diabolical their intention is, is is secret now this woman and um she kind of like uh take her under her, her wing and stuff and but you don't know this person's intention she could have go to this farmhouse over there and then she ended up sacrificing her there is a story of a black woman that went into a one black woman she went into a uh she went into a, a, a sleepover with a bunch of white women and then they bludgeoned her to death and then none of them get arrested. This could have easily happened to the sister. There are stories out there, brothers, okay? Let me see if I can get this story. I don't want to uh, uh, mess up the nation, but let me see if I can get this. All right, let me see if I can read it right here. Okay, um, probe. This came in in July 27, 2021. No charges warranted and death after adult sleepover. Uh, coming, Georgia. Um, Georgia Top's law enforcement agency has completed its investigation into the death of a 40 year old black woman found dead after attending an adult sleepover party in 2018, saying Tuesday that its findings do not support the pursuit of any criminal charges. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation conducts its probe into the death of Tamla Horsford, who was found dead in the backyard of Forsyth um county home of november 4th 2018 the morning after the slumber party horsford family has long suspected foul play multiple news outlets uh, reported that the, the bureau or gbi confirmed tuesday its investigation was completed and that a district attorney's review determined that facts and investigative findings do not support pursuit of prosecution of criminal charges Forsyth County investigation uh, concluded in 2019 that Horsford, the mother of five, died after accidentally falling from a second floor deck at the home located above 40 miles, 65 kilometers northeast of Atlanta. The county sheriff officer announced at the time that it was closing the case because investigation uh, said there was no evidence of foul play. 
Still, family and friends at the time had said they believed foul play was involved and the GBI agreed to reopen the case at the request of Sheriff Juan Freeman amid the public outcry. Investigators have cited the findings of medical examiners who ruled that the woman's injury were consistent with the falling from the home's deck. They also said an autopsy on uncover blood alcohol level content of 0.23, which is nearly three times the legal drinking limit in Georgia. Traces of Xanax and marijuana were also found on her system, according to the authorities. Authorities have said there were no witness to the fall and that Horsford had been on the deck alone, detectives were alone to, to uh, co corroborate incident details using logs from the home security system according to officials. So now, what they say, they say, oh, she was drunk, she has marijuana, Xanax in her system, and then uh, she, um, she slipped and then she fall and she broke, uh, she broke her, well, she died. Okay, she was at a slumber party with a bunch of uh, white women. Okay, and then um, she she died. Okay, that's her. So, um, oh boy. Okay, that's her being in the midst of all those women. Okay, hanging out. Oh, uh, we are girlfriend and stuff. Those people do not have your best interests, you know, and and, and, and their interests. Okay. So you go to their parties and stuff like that, and then they find you dead. She was bludgeoned to death. And then they saw, oh, she slipped out of the stuff, okay? Um, I believe that's her, that's her husband right there. Is that what that is? Okay. So um, that's her friends being the midst of those people. And then acting like, oh, um, they are your friend. They, they love you so much. You go to their house, have sleepover, and then drink with them. And then they kill you. And then you end up dying. And the, the people, they will cover for them. They don't know you like that. Being in the midst of those people having sleepover. You're a 40-year-old adult. You know? And then some people are like that. Now, with that being said, brothers, okay, um... Let me define this word. Define orgy. Here's the definition of orgy. A wild party, especially one involving excessive drinking and unrestrained sexual activity. A wild party. Excessive drinking. Okay, spiritual orgy. Okay, when the sister say the word orgy, like wild party, especially involving excessive drinking. Okay, it doesn't necessarily mean other things. Okay. Back, 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 the, 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 uh, the, it's a word that from the, the Greek word, the, the God, the, the Greek God, Bacchus. Is that what that is? Bacchus. Or Bacchanal, they used to call it. According to simple oh, Wikipedia, Bacchus was the Roman god of agriculture, wine, and fertility, equivalent yeah. to the Greek god Dionysus. Okay. Dionysus was said to be the last god to join the twelve Olympians. Okay. Bacchanal. Supposedly, Hestia gave up her seat for him. Define bacchanal. Here's the definition of bacchanal, literary, an occasion of wild and drunken revelry. Okay, that's what that is over there in uh, uh, in the UK. They speak differently. Okay, a bacchanal is a, a occasion of a wild and drunken revelry, a dr wild drunken party. People are fighting, drinking, and stuff like that. And then you don't know those people's intention, all right? You don't know their intention. This is a back and out. People are running around naked. All sort of things are going on. Those are the women that used to do this, okay? All right? Those are the women. Please do not send me email about, oh, why did I show this? We just uh, uh, show what, what those guys, what those people used to do, okay? The back and out. Wild stuff because we weren't in the truth and things like that happened. Okay, things like that happen. And then uh, the most I say, the reason why we are protected, the reason why he sent the chariot, the angels over there, you don't know what would have happened to this sister. A lot of people went to parties, they went to places like that, they never come back. They never come back, brothers. Okay, they just went to this place and then they never come back. They just go over there and then they party with someone you know hey amen i'm here drinking and smoking some weed having some good time and then i'm gone and then i'm gone you you saw it beloved multiple time excuse me 
multiple times you're seeing people falling off uh, balconies. They are partying on top of rooftop and then they fell and then they die because the spirit of the Mosai wasn't upon them. They are not the seed of the heavenly father. They weren't protected in that manner. And then they were taken like that. Okay, it's a horrible thing, man. It's a horrible, horrible thing. But the Mosai said, For I will pour out water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thine offspring. And the book of Joel, okay? And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Okay? All right? And your sons and daughters will prophesy. So, all right, let us keep on moving and see uh, the final one that the sister have for, for us. Okay, take lesson for that, beloved. This thing is no joke. Okay, this thing is no joke, man. You know, and you go out there and that's why the most I pull you out. Certain lifetime, li lifestyle, you get involved with heavy drinking. I, I heard drinking over there in the UK is out of... <laughs> that thing is off the meter okay so take heed beloved for those of you that are not in the truth okay bye hi big levi um following on from that farm story i just wanted to say that um it you know like i say years later i've sort of thought about this particular lady's intentions and uh and why i potentially could have been in danger but, you know, she um, was okay she was in danger those people can bring you over then sacrifice you for money that's why the cops didn't find anything those people can sacrifice you for anything brothers this thing is real their intention is not for you to be uh thriving and stuff no their intention is for is to get, get rid of you at that farm on that night when the chariots appeared um because when I think about the conversations we had had, um, one of them was that, you know, um, she, she had, she, just in passing, she had sort of mentioned that she had known people that they didn't even have, like, you know, identities, you know, they weren't, they didn't have uh, birth certificates, they weren't on the radar, you know, they weren't on any government radar or anything like that. Yeah, Which, uh, is fair enough, but, you know, a wife, she would say that to me, it's quite interesting. And, um, between her and her husband, they were always, when I think about it, they were kind of looking for a way to get me to sort of take on Give me one second, mum. Won't be a minute for me to sort of like start some sort of business um, with them, but a kind of illicit business, a business which wasn't kind of legit, mm -hmm. but somehow I would kind of take um, the blame. It's also, you know, it would bear my name. So, yeah, anyway, take, take the blame. All, of, the, all of these things, it never happened, you know. Uh, I never sort of started any business with them and I never kind of got too deep with them, you know. But like I say, I feel the chariot was there on that particular night. Okay, the most I pull it out. <laughs> anyway, all right. Thank you. See you. Bye. Shalom. So, okay. And then that's how those people do, brothers. They will approach you and then they will send little clues. They, that's why I always get involved with type with people like this that will approach me and flattered me and say, oh, man, yo, big Levi, man, you are the smartest nigga on the block, man. If I introduce you to some business, you're going to make a hell of a lot of money. Remember that story that I told you about that fellow, that Ishmaelite fellow? And then he said, if you go back to Turkey with me, man, you'll be a millionaire, possibly a billionaire. You're so smart. There are certain things I can show you. You can stuff and things like that. But he says, man, but everything have to be on your name and stuff like that because you're not Turkish and stuff. It would be better, better to do this, to do that. Because if me, they want to be able to, to find you, you are under the radar, things like that. And I tell him, nah, man, I'm not smart, man. I'm good. 
You know, I didn't bite in. A lot of people will come to me, especially certain family members, certain people that I know, they will come to me and say, hey, man, I have this orphanage that I'm trying to start in, in Haiti, man. Uh, I need your brain, man. I know you're super smart. I need you to do stuff so they can traffic in the, those children. Illicit businesses, okay? Take heed, beloved. Okay? Take Think back, beloved. Think back. Sit back pray meditate on your past life and ask the most high why did you pull me out that night what why did you pull me out that day okay those are prophecies okay the most high is pouring his spirit upon the, uh, uh, his daughters and son and they are prophesizing and then again beloved this is uh, uh um the the, the most i say in isaiah 44 verse 3 for i will pour out water upon him that is thirsty we are thirsty okay we are thirsty and then uh, and fl floods upon the dry ground the dry ground is the world the dry ground is the people the gentiles the others that come and then listen they want to uh, hear the testimony the truth uh, the dreams and i will pour my spirit upon thy seed our people knowledge will be increased upon our people and my blessing upon thine offspring we are the offspring of jacob Jacob is the offspring of Isaac, Isaac to Abraham, Abraham to the heavenly father. Okay, so now let's listen to uh, the beloved sister, uh, Lauren, Lauren Greenlee vision. Okay. I'm big Levi. Hey, it's Lauren um, again. Um, I just want to tell you about another vision that I had. This was probably about a week ago. Um, the vision, it started off with this rainbow. I was, uh, I believe I was flying, or I was in the clouds or something, but I seen this rainbow. Once I got past the rainbow, I seen just a lot of clouds, big, beautiful white clouds. And up towards, while I'm walking through these clouds, I see this throne. Nobody was sitting in the throne, but it was just a big red, golden, and white throne. And it was like glowing. I seen that and as I was approaching the throne, the vision ended. It's a really short one. Um, I'm not too sure what it means. Um, I do believe Daniel had a vision about um, the throne. But other than that, I'm not sure. Um, as always, peace and blessings to you, the family, the nation. All praises to the Most High. Thank you. All praises to the Most High, and yes, uh, this this is this vision. Okay, of course, I mean it's the kingdom. You know, she saw uh, the kingdom over there, and and then again, uh, Daniel of also um see uh, uh uh the the kingdom um the uh, the crown and things like that. So those are those are pretty good dreams. Okay. Uh, those are a uh, pretty good vision, so to speak. Okay. I believe it's 12, 13. Is that what that is? I'm trying to look for a scripture here. Um, uh, mm -mm. That's not, uh, that's not what the scripture I'm looking for. Uh, is it 13, 12? I believe it's 13, 12. No, it's not. It's not that scripture. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so uh, with the with the story, Daniel see the the crown and stuff like that. But there is another <clears throat> there is another meaning for crown, uh, which my mother had uh, this um, this vision. Uh, she was working, and then when she was working, and she passed by somebody's house, and when she look, she look at the 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 door. Well, the the gate of the house and she saw a crown there and she saw a crown floating in the air and then the next day the person died uh, somebody died in that house and she said that was weird and then she experienced this at least two or three times it happened you know sometimes if you see crowns you know that's what my mother saw but in this uh, in this particular vision that's uh, the coming of the, the the kingdom okay there is there will be a great king that will be established that will rule over us because the king that we have right now the kings that the the earth have right now it's it is horrible the way the earth is now brothers it is very bad so 
that's what happened let's see let's see the 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 other one shalom big levi this is brother matt dad brethren i had a chance to i got a chance to listen to your prayer this this afternoon i was working and you said some things that i experienced last night uh when i got home from work yesterday I had a dream. Uh, you know, I took a nap and I had a dream with my deceased wife and then my mother who's living. I woke up and I'm like, that's weird. Okay. So I eat, you know, and go to sleep. Man, I had non-stop dreams. It was one after the other. I wasn't waking up. It was just one dream after the other, one dream after the other. And then I woke up and I prayed. I don't know what time it is. It was. So I prayed. And then I had one more dream. Now this dream was the most bizarre dream I've ever had, ever. And it said, it was just as if I was looking at a television screen, but this is just my dream and uh some words popped up the words were avalon it, was, it looked like a giant logo it fit the whole the whole screen it said avalon and it was like a three second dream the letters were white and the background was blue i don't know if the letters were blue or the background was white it was blue and white either way so i looked up avalon and Avalon is, um, we, we will look it up. Avalon's about, we will, is, is we will a, look it up. is an island that they, that King Arthur, anyway, look up the word, A-V-A-L-O-N. It's, it's an island of fruit trees, apple trees. King, it has something to do with King Arthur. I'm like, what the heck does that mean? Uh, I never even thought of this word before. It never came up in any conversation. It just popped in my head. What are your thoughts? All right, brother. Yo, um, thanks for everything that you do. Thanks for being that shepherd. Thanks for being that dog that gathered the sheep. I love you, bro. Um, Man, I look forward every each and every night to be with the brethren, to give praise, to commute, to you know, communicate, to watch, just learn from each other. It's a blessing beyond blessings just to be a part of that. And I thank the most high and I thank you. All praises to the most high. Shalom. All praises. Now, um, with the word Avalon, the brother said, again, we're going to, this is the scripture that I was looking for, Zechariah uh, 12, 10. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplication. The spirit of grace and of supplication. That's why we have to bring our supplication our petition, our plea unto the Most High. That's why when we have dreams, when we have things we don't understand, we bring it unto Him. We say, "Can we? Can you clarify?" Okay, all right. <clears throat> now uh, let's uh, go to Avalon. Okay, let me see the word Avalon. Define Avalon. According to Wikipedia, Avalon is a legendary island featured in the Arthurian legend. Okay, so this island technically mean heaven. Technically mean Avalon mean paradise or Eden. Uh, the beloved brother Abdullah Sia brought a video that uh, if you know it, please, uh, the moderator put the link in the, in the description. Uh, he mentioned that Yahushai built a house when he went to an island 
and in England, uh, either Ireland or England, he be, built a house in Avalon because he went everywhere. Okay, and uh, it, it, that means Avalon is uh, is heaven. Okay, Eden. Back to step uh, number one. Okay, a beautiful place. Okay, a beautiful, well-promised place. Okay, and then King Arthur and stuff like that. That's why right now we are studying uh, uh, the Dark Ages. Uh, pretty, pretty. That's you know a representation of the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's why we are uh, studying the Dark Ages pretty heavy now. The knights, the medieval stuff, because those were people. Okay, they want to say, oh, Marilyn, Mal Arthur was fiction. No, they weren't. They were real people. All right. Um, let's see. Oh boy, let us uh keep on going. Let's see. It's uh, almost time for me to do the prayer. Okay. All right. Thank you, beloved brother, my Dan. Shalom, brother Levi. This is Rita Darzat Health and Wellness. Uh, again, this dream is uh, I I listened to the first one minute and uh, I'm I'm not quite sure if I got the right one because it it chopped off. There is a lot of things in there. And uh, let me see. Uh, this one is four minutes, but it 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 chopped up. There is uh, four minutes and stuff. I think I stuck uh, put it together. I haven't listened to it, but let let's listen though. I had a dream. Now I don't know how many people watched all my children back in the day. Huh. He was teaching me about the business. He said, "What do so you short, want?" Though. I said, I'm, "I want a concert." He said, okay. So, everybody's being judged. I said, well, everybody being judged. He said, I, I pay for 2,000 people to be judged. But a lot of people don't know it. I said, okay. Then, he asked me what I want again. I said, I want a concert. So, he was teaching me about the business. I asked him, did you put some judges down? He said, yes, I did. I want to teach you about the business. What I noticed about his hair, it looked like feathers. Anybody can tell you. Again, the feathers. If you feathers. go into all my children, and I don't know his name, but I call him Adam Chandler, okay? I said, why are you judging? He said, I want to judge the people. What people? It's the ones in the concert. This was the second concert. I said, okay. He said, I'm going to need to teach you about this business. Okay. I said, okay. Now, I am a married woman, but my husband wasn't there. You know, people was in the thing slinging allegations. You know what I'm saying. Oh, she with him. No, no that wasn't what it was. So, he was teaching me something. Okay. So, the people that was in the concert the second time, they had a family dinner. And they didn't invite me. But I snuck in and be nosy. Okay. When they pulled their clothes off. They were so short. That their feet connected to their thigh. I said oh no no no. These demons. So I switched back to him. The one and all my children. Um. A chancellor. He said, I'm going to give you my corporation. I asked him, how much is your corporation? He said, one billion dollars. And I was like stunned in my sleep. I said, okay. He said, but first, before I do this, and have something on, uh, I guess another person on the corporation. She have did wrong. She gonna admit what she do. She gonna sign off on this. And this whole corporation belongs to you. I said, what's the name of the corporation? Now, I can't remember now. But I'm gonna say front, okay? Frontier front, okay? I said, okay. The most I said, look at his hair. Again. And I look at it, it was white snow. It looked like it was, a, you know, feathers in his hair. Now, the man's dead now, okay? I don't look at all my children. I said, okay, I'll do what you say. 
So I didn't assign the um, documents. But let me tell you what happened. Remember when they used to be in blackface? Why used to be in blackface? Put black polish on or however they did it. The most I showed me, he flipped the script. It was a young man. He's about 25 years old. 25 or 30. I'm not sure. He was in white face. He was laughing. It was like grip. He would move back, cut my face, move back, cut my face, move back. I said, okay, father. He said, remember the money train. I said, yeah. He said, remember when you was on train was rolling. I said, yeah. And how you was dialed with a whole lot of dollar bills. Things like that. I said, yeah. It's coming to pass. This is Rita Green, Dr. Um, Zion Health and Wellness. Please share this with the nation. Shalom. All praises to the Most High. I'm not too familiar with uh, <clears throat> the 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 TV show or all my children. I'm not even sure if this is that the one the sister talking about. But again, um, uh, you know, Joel 2 verse 28, and it shall come to pass that the sister just said it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see vision. So, and this, uh, I believe this dream, she met this entity uh, that have feather, uh, that it, its hair look like feather. And uh, uh, there is this entity was telling her something about striking a deal or something like that uh, to give her the corporation. And what I'm getting from this dream is like when she said uh, the Mosai flipped it on it, it's the switch. They used to make the uh, black face and make fun of us. And now we're putting on our spiritual white face and make fun of you. The tail will become the head and the head will become the tail. So now because of all those things that used to do to us, the, the, the TV, the TV shows, the, the, um, the corporation will become our corporation. You know, they will come unto us. Everything that, well, you didn't own anything. Everything you swagger jack from us will be given back unto, unto us again. That's what I'm getting from this. So let's play uh, another one. Well, how long we are into this thing? All right, then. Hi, my name is Rose Martin, and I had a dream on September 14th, 2021. September 14th, 2021. I and my husband were visiting some friends, and we were uh, staying in a kind of like row house it, where the, you know, we could walk between back and forth and visit with others and then go to your room. Well, I had, go, we had gone to sleep and then uh, I woke up and my husband was missing. So I kind of, you know, just, just got started waking myself up, getting up. Um, and I heard the wind outside began to pick up and it picked up so fast and so quick that it had these uh, hurricane sounds that were going on. So when I looked out the window, um, I saw my grandbaby and I went out to grab her. And when I went out to grab her and I started backing up toward the building because on the alongside the building were two chairs that were sitting out there. And when I backed up to the chair and I with her, I sat down in the chair and I was looking with amazement because these were, winds were, were just tearing up everything. And there was a, a person, uh, a guy came and he sat in the chair beside me and he said, told, told me that some of us would uh, see this and others wouldn't be able to see it. And when he said that, I started noticing the, the people that were out and about. And they were just going on with their everyday lives and uh, seemed like nothing was affecting them 
but I noticed the wind wasn't affecting me, the guy that was sitting in, in the chair next to mine, or my grandbaby. And uh, since it wasn't affecting me, I was I was really surprised that, you know, well, well, what was going on? So when I looked up, it was like thunder and, and rumbling sounds. And when I looked up, it was a female deer. Now this this deer was really, really massive. She was big, she was huge, and she was running. And when she she ran through, I thought thought that she was the one that was making the the sounds, but I realized it was another sound that that was following her, the sound the sound that she was making. And when I looked, kept watching from the, rec the direction she came from, and it was a massive, massive male deer that that was had giant antlers, and she, the female deer, was about half the size of what he was, so he was very, very large. And when he finally came through, he it the 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 winds were twisting and tearing up things and rumbling and and just uh, tearing up everything that, that was in sight. So after he passed by and everything, the dust and everything settled, uh, the guy and I and my grandbaby, we were looking and the people that were there had disappeared and they seemed like they were just no more. And at this point, I heard the voice of my husband call me, and I woke up. And as the, um, the no, the week before I had this, that dream, I saw in the sky, it says, I am angry. And that was it. All praises to the Most High. Yea, indeed, there are great destruction coming upon this earth. There are great judgment coming. And uh, talking about that, <clears throat> I received a video from our beloved brother Patrick from Jamaica. And uh, there were a line of children, at least 10 of them, uh, little children, boys and girls, lining down with a hospital gown on them. They were all no more. And I believe what they said, they took the, uh, they were friends with Jabber Jaw, and then they are no more. And we, take, you keep, we keep telling our people, okay, those are the Christians, we keep telling them, you are not sick, nothing is going on with you. Psalm 91 verse 4, you don't need anything else. Your children don't need none of that thing. Okay? And there is heavy judgment in the land over there in Jamaica. And you know, a, a lot of people will send me stuff and, and things like that. A lot of so-called Protestant uh, Baptists and over there, they refuse to repent, beloved. Haiti, the Bahamas, they refuse to repent. All they want to do is hoard themselves after other gods. All they want to do is go ahead and be friend with Jabba Jaw. Mm, that's what happened. You know, it's a horrible thing that happened, brothers. There's great destruction. A lot of us will not come. A lot of the people that look like us cannot come because it's not up to them to uh, 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 come and then just barge in there in the, in the kingdom and then just uh, uh, get in it. That's not, that's not how that works, man. Okay, that's not how that works. This is all uh, uh, when it comes to the heavenly father. Okay, so, and the father said he's angry. When the sister will look up on the, the, the sky, he say, I'm angry. Okay, get ready, brothers. A lot more hell are coming. Take heed. You know, if you're not covered, there's nothing we, or personally, I can do for you. Shalom, brother Levi. All praises to the Most High. Hallelujah. Today is um, the 1st of July. Today is the day that I was born. And obviously, I no longer celebrate birthdays anymore. And um, 
yeah, it's like it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a problem for my family. They just can't understand, no matter how much I try to explain, like they just don't understand. They just don't get it. I can't make them to get it. I can't make them to understand. And I just leave it in the hands of the Most High. If he wants to give them eyes to see and ears to hear, you know, it's his choice. But, you know, I just needed to someone to talk to and get this off my chest. Because obviously my brother was just going into one today. And um, he most certainly doesn't like you. Whenever he comes, if, you know, he comes in and the TV's on and I've got you on, you know, he's always got something to say. And I'm just really praying that, Father, um, I just hope and pray that he'll be around to really see, you know, the, the, the truth. Because he's doesn't really, he's not really spiritual. Um, and they don't get it. And I mean, I can kind of understand with my family because... When I was in churchianity, Christianity, um, in the one of the first churches I went to, like, that was when I was at my lowest point. And the church was able to manipulate me. And basically, I lost a lot of money, basically. And, you know, I was brainwashed. Cause I was at my lowest point and so obviously my family seeing me go through all of that lose money and things and so now now I'm on this journey on on this way of life they just don't get it I think they think that um yeah it's another one of those brainwashing things and because it's kind of like so drastic you know but it is what it is I gotta do what I gotta do for the most high and i'm just so happy today you know i was just um watching your video the one you the last one you made and you know i'm just so happy to be with the nation i'm just so happy that i'm fasting today you know i woke up this morning before the sun rose i did my prayers and everything opened my fast and i'm fasting for the whole day and i know my brother's gonna come home and i know he's gonna be thinking it's your birthday but it's like you know he's like but you can acknowledge it's your birthday and blah 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 and they just don't understand they don't understand but as i said it is what it is i'm gonna do what i gotta do for the most high and yeah I'm fasting, I'm waiting for five o'clock, you know, to, yeah, to continue the prayers with the nation, and I'm just thankful and grateful, I just, I'm just praying that my brother will really get to see, and all the people, because I'm the only one in my circle, everyone else is sleeping, no one has the eyes to, father hasn't opened their eyes and ears so what i see no one else sees and it is so hard but i'm just thankful for the nation yeah i'm just thankful where i can come and listen and pray and do what i gotta do for the most high because that's all that matters but I just really hope and pray that they will all get to see the real truth because my brother he'll be like oh how many people have come and gone and they've been waiting for the return <laughs> you know and saying yeah the end of the world's coming how many people have been saying this it's the end of the world it's the end of the world it's the end of the world and people have come died gone and you know there's been so many disasters and stuff in all that time but still we don't see no return of nothing you know and these are the things that you know he'll say but i just leave him in the hands of the most high just waiting for father to just show himself 
to all these people because you know people will just look at you like you're crazy <laughs> you know people just think oh you're mad because it's like so drastic but they don't know what I know they don't see what I see but I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing continue giving all praises to the most high because all my life I've been giving praises to that devil and now I know the truth no more when I see anything happening it's all praises to the most high even when I was trying to tell them my mama my brother the other day about the um um the ish community the building that collapsed and I'm trying to tell them that this is the most high you know and they just don't believe it but you know we know the signs father's showing us the signs so yeah that's that I just needed to get this off my chest so yeah I'll be with yeah you guys in prayer at five o'clock and I give all praises to the most high hallelujah blessings shalom wow all praises to the most high and peace be with the sister she sent us this since july and then we're now getting this the, the, again like i said the heavenly father only move us well you know when he said go ahead bring it in bringing it to the nation now beloved like we said before serving the most high is not easy being a seed of the heavenly father is not a s easy job is not a, a easy thing serving the most i do the most i job is not an easy task and he grieved the family exceedingly that when you wake up again brothers we say this all the time you find out that you are the true child of the most high we are the true children with great joy we say man finally finally we are going to go home and then we're going to have all this blessing all this technology and father finally uh, forgive us and then we run to family members we run to friends we run to co-workers we give them that great news and then we think like they will rejoice with us we think like they will be so happy and then it turned out to be the complete opposite instead of this person you know even at least acknowledge you that person shame you even if that person would say okay that's good then that person went against to say why why can't the others can't come we all the same love love will say everything you don't love people you will not go into uh, um the kingdom and uh, into heaven our own brothers i got a dude his own brother come against his loin you know I got a dude, he got attacked by his own brother because of the truth. Uh, uh, some people got beat up because of the truth. One sister got beat up by a family member because of the truth. Okay, it's not an easy task, brothers. That's why I don't go around and try to talk to people and try to tell them anything because I know this truth is not for them. And they are now, beloved brothers and sisters, seeing the wrath of the Mosai. They are now witnessing brethren what the Mosa is doing they are now having the sense of saying wait a minute this thing is not going nowhere and it's getting worse and again like the sister said this is the only place she can come and find solace and find peace with her family her true family we can come here people you know we share our dreams no matter how crazy they are we share our idea no matter how crazy they are we have our little challenges little five dollar challenge okay the most i've been being put it heavy on my spirit brothers i'm telling you the most is coming on uh, uh, on my spirit heavy man the spirit is heavy onto me about the the whole uh, uh making the movies and then the music and stuff for the most high man the spirit is heavy unto me man the most i say he needs his children to get more involved and give him more praises and bring the truth to the forefront the gentiles had, had their chance to bring the truth they but lie now it is our chance and we will bring it 
But brothers, uh, to be frank with you, at this moment right now, it's not a time for us to party and celebrating and then do stuff. It's a, it's a time to share and spend this few last time with the father, with the nation, with the other brethren to work and do things that the others can share. Things that we have in common. It's time for us to get together and cook together and make movies and make songs and share idea and wine tasting, spiritually speaking. And read, have book clubs. Uh, Big Leaf, I refer that book uh, again. We have the book, excuse me, I said the book, the book club and the Zoom call. Again, uh, uh, if you need that, you have to go ahead and um, uh, you have to look uh, and uh, alone together 12 tribes uh, at gmail.com for the book club and the Zoom club. We have to come together because our own family members, brethren, our own very own family, they despise the truth. They despise us. Even most importantly, they de they despise the Most High. There's nothing we can do about that. We just give it to the Most High, and we say all praises. We let it go. All right. Let's listen to our next sister, beloved sister Tonja, with confirmation. Shalom, big Levi. And family, hey, go ahead and share this with the with the nation as a confirmation. Thank you. Okay, that's how you do it, brothers. If you are sending us something because um you have, be, I don't listen to those things, brothers. In the beginning, you give praises to the Mosai, and then you say, "Go ahead, please share this with the nation," because there are certain things you may not want to share with the nation. There are certain other things you may want to stay out. You know, you want it to uh, uh, be you know um, it's, it, it, private. So, if you are sending a dreams, an experiment, something happens happen and even happen please take your time make sure you record it well okay there is no limit okay since it's not on the phone nobody's calling there is no limit take however you please bring it to the nation okay bring it clear listen to it if you, if it sounds clear send it to us and then give us the permission so we can do this all right no fear no limit let the spirit flow and share it with us all right uh, regarding ley lines and a portal so july 29th this morning i mean on the morning of july 29th we all were gathered around and decided to go ahead and make a trip to take our um, niece to a school she chose I reluctantly really did not want to go because I know it's a waste of time based off of what we know. Hallelujah. So I went ahead and got in the passenger side. Mister was driving. And as we stumbled across the freeway, all of a sudden, the scene changed for me. All of a sudden, I was flying. On the passenger side, I no longer saw who was driving anymore, so I believe it Mr. was not driving anymore. I looked below me in the highway. It was crumbled. It was chaos. It was like that accident we saw back in January where all the cars were crumbled up. But this time the road uh, was falling from up under them as well. But I was at peace. I was in my car. I was flying. I was flying no bother and i'm like oh wow father what does this mean i think i knew what it meant but i got confirmation from a video that uh little son um subal nabaya who uh, who did something on ley lines and portals he did that back in june but the father brought that message back to me for my confirmation of my question of what does that mean father um, the father is grand. He is grand. You guys, the nation, we do not have to worry. Put our trust in the father. We do not have to worry. Hallelujah. What's coming on the earth because the father is visiting the earth. We do not have to worry. We're up under the Psalms 91. And what brought it home for me when um, Lebel, uh, Sabel used Jeremiah 6. 16 and Isaiah 35 8 through 10. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and all praises to the Most High Creator. 
Thank you guys. Shalom, Big Levi. All praises. Thank you to, for the uh, the beloved sister Tanja for bringing this unto the nation and bring the nation peace and good news and good tidings about uh, the ley lines. Okay, you can read the scriptures yourselves, beloved. Okay, since we are uh, moving to this and it's gonna be 12 a.m. This is pre recorded. Thank you for uh, the beloved sisters. Okay, that this thing is uh, it's real, beloved. Okay, now we know other people are listening and then they will take this and then they will turn it into some kind of alien stuff technology or some kind of unknown forces no this is, this is the most high doing this and we thank the sister for this okay all praises to the most high let us keep on going i wanted to talk about a dream that i had last night um sorry if i sound weird <clears throat> i'm out of breath but um yes this is they israel but, um but yeah, um, so last night I had a dream and <clears throat> I was in a room and it was nighttime and there was like, uh, I was in the midst of like two thirds and my mother and my brother, my brother's in the truth and my mother, she hear, she heard about the truth but she's not really walking in it and um, I seen an influencer that I know uh, that I used to follow back when I had Instagram and he was a Christian influencer so, but he he had like a photo frame in his hand and it had the old picture of Yahawashai <clears throat> he was holding it but I don't know what that means um, I checked his YouTube to see if I don't know anything changed but it seems to me that he's still a two-third so I don't know what that means and I, I don't know him personally but in the dream I saw him <clears throat> and it was dark and there were other people in the mist but they were like silhouette and uh, so I didn't see their faces and it was like I was in a hotel and um, so anyway I was hearing these footsteps and it was like it was like I was hearing them from outside and I was like asking people yo do you hear this do you hear the footsteps and they said no nah, they didn't they didn't hear anything so I was like okay maybe it's all in my head and then the footsteps stopped and then all of a sudden i looked outside the window and there was a beam of light from the sky and it was dark right but there were some clouds gray clouds and it was like a flashlight and it was just flickering not flickering but moving around everywhere um I guess like a, a windmill lights um i don't know if windmills have lights but anyway as that was going on i heard like a like a disturbing scream from coming from where the the light was and when i heard that i was really scared um it kind of sounded like those screams that were coming from the sky months ago i don't know if you remember but it sounded like that but it was more like terrorizing and and disturbing i can't explain it but i was really scared um everybody in the room was scared like they were real real scared i saw my mother's eyes and she was so scared and i was like you see i told you that's the most high i don't know i had a feeling that it was the most high in my dream and after i told her that it's like she was speechless and she couldn't do anything she like froze and um everybody else was going crazy i looked at my brother he was just praising the most high i don't know if he was scared too 
but he was praising him and then I turned around and I started praising the most high <laughs> and then I woke up and um I was I don't know I was so scared I started repenting and crying because if I don't know if it felt like I was in hell like the feeling that I got from the dream it was like the worst feeling I don't know what that means um if if you can tell me what it means um uh, that would be nice and then also I had another dream right after that when I went back to sleep I had another dream um I was home with my three kids and then um uh for some reason I already knew that I was there was people in my house and they were like tr like trying to hurt us to hurt me my children and so I hid in the closet I tried to hide my kids first in the closet and then one of them came in the room and then as soon as they opened the closet door I stabbed a female in the heart and then she died and then I knew that the other, there were other people there and they wanted to hurt me as well and then they saw that I killed the female and then they came after me and I didn't even put up a fight and then um they they started grabbing me I don't know if they seen my kids but my kids weren't in the picture after that they because they took me out of the closet they grabbed me and i guess they were prepping me to like kill me i think they wanted to like hang me or something and i started yelling yahawa yahawa and then the the girl that i killed she woke up and then she i guess she started fending for me um yeah and that was it i that was the end of the dream so yeah, I don't know what that means either. I was really scared in that dream as well. That's why I started yelling Yahawa. Because there was nothing I could do. And I knew I was going to die. So I don't know if you can tell me what that means. Thank you. Now... <laughs> This this is terrifying. This is a terrifying dream. <laughs> this is the man the most iron. This is a terrifying dream, man. Okay, but uh, um, I tell the sister to be at peace. And uh, what I what I hear and see in this in this dream is nothing to be worried about because you are protected. Then again, with you being seeing nothing but two thirds brothers, the two thirds their spirit can really damage you, brothers. Their spirits, their energy can really damage you. If you keep watching the two thirds online spirits, especially the so-called influencers, and then you're going to see them in your dream. A lot of people see me, excuse me, in their dream, and 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 certain time, uh, the dream is positive, and certain times I'm in their dream, it's a horrible and terrible thing. Certain dreams they saw me. If you see me. And your dream, it's not me. It's a, it's a, a, a I, again, I am not an angel, but it's a angel, so to speak, that took the form of somebody that you know, you respect, you have a great uh, amount of uh, honor uh, for this person. Honor means respect, okay? It's not like you worship this person, you appreciate this person, and then you fear the Mosai. And the most I will send you uh, somebody like me, like Eldayel, Big Jude, Abdul Seer, you know, any of our brothers that you watch, and then that person will appeal to you, and you will show respect to that person. Now, if you keep seeing two thirds and stuff, it's the same thing. There are certain people that you've been watch, and their energy can quickly uh, uh, um, dissolve onto you. Now, the place that she went, uh, no doubt, it's Sheol, okay, uh, you know, there's another word Christian call it, which they call it their home world, they call it their home, that's where they are going, <coughs> and talking about that, the queen is not doing too well, though, she need a little push, I'll ask the soldiers to send a little uh, spiritual um, support for the for the queen, send, send her some black woes, 
so to speak now in this place that she went the ceiling and everything and then the mom was there and she says see look i told you this thing is real then again this is another family battle this is another things that we have with our families and you know we have to uh, always uh, fighting them always trying to prove things to them and the only way we can prove the the, the thing unto our family or unto our people is it when it happened for real when it happened like in real time that's the only only way so it was a future event that the most i show unto the the sister again in the book of joel uh, chapter 228 your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Okay, our people are seeing things. This is a future event and it will happen. Okay, I'll tell the sister to be at peace. And then, uh, you know, with the whole thing coming in the closet, getting you and you ended up killing that thing. And that thing came back to life and coming and protect you, screaming the name of the Mosa. All of this are protection. Okay. Beloved, stay out of certain things. We need to stay out of them. And uh, uh, again, like the sister says, she used to follow this fellow, um, <clears throat> this YouTube influencer uh, back then. So I'll say certain people, just let them go, man. Their energy is not, is not yours. There are certain people online I don't follow. I have nothing against them. But there are people that I used to get uh, um, a way to start certain businesses, certain things. And then I find out like the Mosai called me to do this and there will be no tomorrow except the Mosai tomorrow okay stay out of things and then don't fear anything a lot of people feel stuff they took they be friend with jabber ja okay and um let me see oh, let me see that so jabber ja and then they make friend with jabber ja and jabber ja bite them you know inject them with this venom and then they no longer okay those people they don't they it's not in the best interest like the sister josie it, 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 you are not in the best interest okay they they don't want you here they know they are going they're gonna see if they can take as many as they can with them and this is the will of the mosai there's nothing we can do about it is pray fast and holding on to the mosai and i tell the sister to be at peace and we have the final one here with our beloved sister valentina from the dominican republic yesterday when fasting i contacted the lord to ask for his presence in the fasting i opened my window and a big a strong wind was blowing from the east and then two bumblebees came to my lemon brush tree. Later, I saw another bird that flew, a lot of white butterflies. Then the, the wind got stronger, and there came a bird. Later, a vulture flew by. And last, a white heron, and the water started to rain. Okay, I asked the Lord for confirmation of his presence. In the Bible and I asked the Lord for the bleeding from our noses to see if it was for purification now this morning when I opened the Bible the first thing that I found was the birds in Leviticus 11 I opened my Bible randomly and then guess what in chapter 12 is the blood I was asking to see bleeding to, to, to make sure that that bleeding was for purification. And I got Leviticus 12. So I couldn't stop to share with you. I hope you understand my accent. But that's exactly the, the confirmation that I got. I'm sorry I don't have a voice recorder. Because my phone doesn't have the capacity. But I hope you got the message. God bless you. All praises to the Most High. Thank you, the sister. It's well recorded. And, and it is good. Now... I had the same issue what the sister had a couple months ago i was being i was bleeding from my nose a true thing brothers if you watch my old video i always check my nose say hey, am i bleeding it is a form of purification i just like it's it's like a bunch of blood coming off my nose it's not i'm damaged or anything i'm like i'm thinking i'm like okay okay well this is kind of uh, uh some blood vessel uh maybe i stay in the ac for too long and it happened three times and the blood came out of all slimy it is a form of purification it happened to another sister 
when I was talking about that, she called. She said, wait, the same thing happened to me too. You know, it's a form of purification. When you ask the Messiah to communicate, he will give you clue. Those are the best ways that you know for a fact the Heavenly Father is communicating with you is through the books, the dreams, certain sign that's been sending on to you, to you alone. Okay? We give the Messiah praises and glory. Thank you, sister, for this great confirmation. All right? And then uh, we're having this one right here. Um the sister that have uh, uh, this thing, but uh, it's not well recorded, and then it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty grainy. So we will try to listen to it though. Last year I had a dream. Okay. And in this dream, something happened to me where um, I cannot I up the volume. Okay. To be looking for a beam of light to be beamed up so I can go home. I can get out of here. I was ready to go. And um, I'm looking for the beam, and I find it to, so I can be beamed up into the chariot so I can go home. I'm happy. And then it was like a voice came and said, no, it's not your time. It's not time yet. You still have work to do. So I started crying. I'm like, why, Father? I want to go home. I want to be with you. I don't want to be there anymore. And as I'm crying and saying this, um, he just told me I still had work to do. So, um, at that point, the, ch the chariot came through and it, somehow I ended up inside of it. And it was like, um, it was, I can't even really explain. It was like a, the front root, the front view of the chariot, you could see like straight out and you could see, you know, what's going on in the world. And, uh. As we're in, in, as I'm in this chariot, um, sitting in this chair, watching everything, you know, we, we ride into some some city. I didn't know what city. I can't say. I don't know where. I, it, it didn't tell me where exactly. Um, it just the buildings were tall. You know, skyscrapers. Any place where the skyscrapers are, um, it was just tall buildings. And in this dream. As we are going in the chariot, we went to the city. And in the city is where um, the father was saying to me while we were riding, he was saying he was speeding things up. And as he was saying he was speeding things up, it looked like something just went really fast. Like it was just fast forwarding. Like time just started fast forwarding because everything went really fast in the world. Like I'm watching it on the screen. Um, it just went really fast. He said he was speeding things up for our sake and uh, as he said that we ended up in the city and that's when he started um, he started showing me the vision where it looks like it was a hand a big hand and he was knocking down these buildings like he was just destroying things with his hand and he was saying, they build up and I throw down. As he was just knocking things out the sky and people started running and screaming. They were scared. Um, it was it was like uh, earthquakes. It was a really bad earthquake. It was uh, like it was just all type of like uh, chaos going on because everybody was so scared. It was just. And he was just knocking down the buildings. And as he was knocking down the buildings, he said that he they built, but I throw down. And um, I saw the big gushes of water coming. It was just all type of like um, like chaos. It was just it was it was a scene out of a movie, basically. It was like a scene out of a movie where all chaos was going on at one time. I forgot what movie that was that I saw where, where it was just like different elements happening at the same time. Things were just going on that everybody just running to and fro trying to get to safety. And as he showed me that, we ended up back inside of the chariot. And he told me that in that time, he was going to take me 
and pe and some people it was it was it was a group of people it was a it was a lot of people I can't say how many it was just like a lot and we ended up inside I'll praise to the most I so um <clears throat> excuse me boy it's already 1201 i gotta begin the prayer uh yeah so this dream brothers it's it's all about destruction it again uh i don't know it might sound good to you but i can't i barely can hear it but i hear it, uh, all the destruction yeah so that's what that is man and nobody can say this beloved nobody can say it. we didn't warn them nobody can say well i didn't hear your servant this thing is on youtube it's all over the world it's all over in all the places okay and then now I'm starting to thinking this, I, I really need to uh, get that Woku and, and Amazon TV things going on because we have to get that thing going on over there. So uh, yeah, uh, that's what happened, beloved. We have to do this. We have to bring the truth in front and let the people know that the great destruction is coming upon you and our people will be save and they will be delivered daniel 12 1 uh michael standing up he's not coming to destroy us he's coming to deliver us and he's coming to fight for us all praises all praise to the most high god hi brother big levi shalom to you and your family how are you it's been a long time um i want to talk to you about something but that's for another time um, so I had a dream a few nights ago, a few nights ago. I dreamt that there were, there was chaos on the earth, a lot of chaos. And then all of a sudden, like people start, some people start like flying in the air, like they're going in sometimes something inside like a bubble. But in the dream, in my mind, it was like a firmament, like, and I myself was also taken up and put into that bubble. And when I look down, I see a lot of destruction. I see fire, people getting, people getting burned and people killing each other and all of those things going on. A lot of chaos and a lot of destruction was going on down there. And then I started to worry about my mother and my family. So I'm thinking the reason why they didn't get taken up in the air and put into that bubble was because, um, you know, they weren't in the truth. So that's the reason why they didn't get taken up in the firmament. And I wanted to, I wanted to leave from out of that bubble to go back down. For her, but I'm saying, if I risk that, if I risk getting out of here to go back down there for her, I might not get back inside. And then after that, I just wake up. Yeah, so that is just, that is the dream that I wanted to share with you. Okay, brother. Shalom, and I love you, and I love the nation. Okay, bye bye. All praises to the Most High. Okay. <clears throat> Yes, beloved brothers and sisters, <laughs> nobody can say we didn't warn them, okay? Family members, man, they're not going to be able to, to make it. Um, so let me let the nation, uh, oh boy, I'm going to be a little bit late, so I got to stop this. Uh, yeah, uh, we went into this, beloved. Um, this thing is real. And you hear all the testimonies, you hear all the dreams, all the dreams are connected. Chariots came in, destruction. Uh, some people got saved and some of them are no more. And nobody, again, I'm saying this, nobody can sit there, beloved, and say, like, um, I never knew anything like this. Every, I, I never received any warnings. The Mosai is not a coward. He's not going to come destroy you and not giving you a, a, a chance to somewhat know what's coming against you. Uh, you do know. It's just like you are very proud. Beloved, then again, thank you for everybody that watched this. If you wish, if you want to share your dreams with the nation, please record it properly make sure there's no tv in the background because if uh the computer picked up whatever is talking on the tv except if the if the tv is ours if if i am the one talking on the tv give me a second i'm receiving a phone call right here um let me see hello hey i'm so sorry 
Hi, hello. This is Sister Belinda. I just want to share something with you. You can share with the nation. Go ahead, my sister. Um, I'm sorry, sister. Can you repeat that for us again? You say your son what? Your son? Ronnie. Uh-huh. Got the CDL, got the CDL license. Uh-huh. And he receives a feather. He saw it on his window. All, pra all praises all to praise. the Moza. All praises. Yes. I just wanted to say, it just made me happy. He saw it. He said, Mom, look, I got a feather. That's and good. I just want to to let you know that he knows about you and he talked. I pray with him and he knows who Father is and he's just so happy. He's told me what he's just a child. He said, I give him a word on Okay. All right then. Uh, thank you. We are about to begin the prayer and I will yes, let sir. I will let the nation know and so they can give the most high glory and praise it. Praise again. He got his feather. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, okay bye. 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 Shalom. Shalom. Shalom, beloved. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, all praises to the Most High, man. And that's how the Holy Spirit communicate. While we are doing this video and the sister call, and then the sister always, if you want something to share with the nation, always say this, brothers. Always say that I want this to, I want to share this with the nation. And most likely I'm in the middle of doing a video. I can just do it there and then it will organically connect it with everything. So again, <clears throat> um, if you wish to uh, uh, do this, uh, beloved, okay, um, <clears throat> excuse me, if you wish to do this, um, do it, record it, no music in the background, um, you can go ahead, there could be nature, but no music and no TV, because YouTube will give us a lot of hell, and then the first thing to do, you give the Heavenly Father praises and glory, and they say, please share with the nation, then you proceed, and after that, you sent love to the nation, to the Father, to the nation, and then you say, may the king reign forever, and then we're good, all right? Fast, pray, repent, repeat. Thank you for everybody that sent your dreams. Uh, please send them in audio form, name them properly, so we can cataloging them uh, properly, and then we can share it with the nation. Okay, fast, pray, repent, repeat. May the king reign forever.